In 2013, former FA chairman Greg Dyke claimed that England should be aiming to win the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Well, here at HITC Sport, we're damn impatient. So using Football Manager 2018, we're going to find out how the three Lions did at the World Cup six years in the future. Would we be lifting our third World Cup trophy? Obviously after we win this year's tournament in Russia. Okay, maybe it's not. Anyway, will England win the 2022 World Cup just like the FA predicted? Let's take a look. Well, for starters, England did not win the World Cup in Qatar because Football Manager decided it would no longer be held there, instead moving the tournament to Australia. Gareth Southgate's side, yes, he's still in charge in 2022, qualified for the World Cup and were drawn in Group F alongside Japan, Cameroon and Argentina. Ranked as the 7th best team in the world, England made it through the group stage but would only come second due to goal difference. The tournament began with a 1-0 win over Argentina and that was followed by a 2-1 triumph over Japan that pretty much secured England's place in the knockout round. A draw against Cameroon would guarantee top spot but they would in fact lose that game allowing Argentina to leapfrog the three lines with their superior goal difference. In the first knockout round, England seemed to get away with it despite finishing second in their group, coming up against Russia, who had topped their group ahead of Uruguay, Germany and Gabon, winning all three games in the process, so maybe it wasn't a favourable tie for England. That proved to be the case, as Southgate's side were eliminated from the tournament once again early on, and surprise surprise it was on penalties, after drawing 2-2 after extra time. Some things never change. Let's take a look at who was in the England starting lineup for that game, as well as some other notable absentees. In goal was Jordan Pickford. Much is being made about the England number one debate right now, with Joe Hart no longer the player used to be, while Jack Butland and Jordan Pickford failed to exceed the standard they set last season in the Premier League. But at the 2022 World Cup, it's Jordan Pickford who gets the number one jersey, with Joe Hart long gone and Jack Butland nowhere to be seen, failing to even make the squad. England's back keepers were Fraser Forster, a frightening thought right now, and Harry Lewis. Right back was Nathaniel Klein. By 2022, Klein seems to be over the back issue that was plaguing him in the present day, which means he gets the nod at the 2022 World Cup, while current first choice right back Kyle Walker is on the decline, rotting in the Man City reserves at the age of 32. As for Klein, who was 31 at the tournament, he would miss the penalty in the crucial shootout that saw England eliminated. Oh dear. Centre back is Michael Keane. If you saw our video on Manchester United's football manager exploits, you'd know that Michael Keane has had an expensive few years, costing both Man United and Chelsea a combined £62.5 million. Amazingly though, his performances haven't even been that good enough to warrant all that money being thrown about, but you could probably say the same about his real life move to Everton. Either way, he's a mainstay at the back for England in the 2022 World Cup. Well, at least for the short time they were there anyway. He was alongside Ben Gibson. There was a lot of rotation throughout the tournament, but it was Ben Gibson who got the nod in the knockout game against Russia. A transfer to Tottenham had made Gibson a more high profile player, but he'd be asking questions if he's a starter for England in six years time, considering right now he's just got one year of Premier League football under his belt, and he got relegated. Incredibly though he kept John Stones out of the team, meaning England's best defender was on the bench. No wonder they got knocked out. Left back was Ben Chilwell. Now it seems like Gareth Southgate has got his rotation all wrong. Luke Shaw played pretty much every minute of the group stage with some fairly average performances as well as a match winning goal against Argentina, but for some reason Southgate decided to mix it up against Russia and bring in Ben Chilwell, a lad who appears to be no good on football manager. Great man management Gareth, really top class stuff. In defensive midfield we've got Rob Holding, or Holding midfield if you like. <laughs> this is great banter, it really is. For some reason, the Arsenal defender is sitting in front of the defence at the Aussie World Cup, letting the Russians run around him willy-nilly in what is his only appearance at that World Cup, and probably any World Cup, be it virtual or reality. Also in holding midfield was Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now the current Liverpool lad does look like a future England star, but it would be surprising to see him at the heart of the three lines midfield, as a combo of him and Rob Holding hardly looks strong and robust. Speaking of things that aren't strong and robust, Jack Wilshere is also on the bench as it becomes an unwritten rule that he has to go to major tournaments, while Eric Dyer also fails to make the 11 despite featuring prominently during the group stage. The mind boggles. On the right wing is Raheem Sterling. Now you can't argue that Raheem Sterling will be an England regular in 2022, especially with the way Pep Guardiola is developing him right now at Man City. In six years time, Sterling should be reaching the peak of his powers and one of the key reasons why England think they could win the 2022 tournament. 
Obviously, it wasn't that impressive as he was dragged off at half-time against Russia in place of Jesse Lingard, and he's also got a young Jadon Sancho breathing down his neck after impressing in Germany. On the left flank is Jordan Ibe. Another shocking inclusion, considering he couldn't even buy an assist or a goal last season for Bournemouth, but at the 2022 World Cup, Jordan Ibe actually got on the score sheet, fanning the net in the game against Russia, as well as converting his penalty in the shootout. However, his place in the starting eleven does come as a surprise, considering Marcus Rashford is sat there on the bench. Attacking midfield was Deli Ali. England's other goal scorer against Russia, Deli Ali won the Man of the Match award for his performance in the knockout game. It's just a shame the rest of his teammates appear to let him down. Either his diving antics have calmed down or he's just gotten a bit better at it, as Ali only picked up one yellow card during the tournament. Maybe he got his nipper out again on camera or something, who knows. I imagine that's a bookable offence. And up front it was Harry Kane. The saviour of English football and the man who will be lifting the World Cup this summer, at the 2022 World Cup, Harry Kane had little impact, scoring just once during the tournament, suggesting that maybe he isn't the saviour of English football, or at least in the eyes of football manager. Then again, considering the backup option in Gareth Southgate's squad is the goal-shy Saido Berahino, maybe saving English football is too big a job for Harry Kane. So that was the England team that failed to win the World Cup in 2022. Gareth Southgate got the sack in November that year after bringing zero success. And the man that replaced him was Gary Rowett, who one year after the 2022 World Cup, manages the 19th best team in world football. Maybe the future isn't that bright after all. So that's England at the 2022 World Cup according to Football Manager 2018. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.